Tiny Bunny, this game has been recommended to me by a viewer. Uh, I took a look at it, it is free on Steam right now, and it looked pretty cool. Apparently it's supposed to be some sort of... Was für ein Spiel ist das? Apparently it's supposed to be some sort of horror visual novel, and the art style of it is amazing. It is free on Steam right now, and I've heard from a lot of people, especially from the re reviews, that it should not be free, because it's such a good game. But I guess we're gonna be putting that to the test today. So I would say, let's just get it started. Ooh, spooky. The window clawed at my window all- What? <laughs> the wind clawed at my window all night long. It wandered the fields and howled like a hungry beast. An endless song weaved from all sorts of voices, shrill, gentle, sneery, twined in the air. They were shouting and laughing, and arguing about something. Someone was running through the snow while casting long shadows that would occasionally creep close to my bed. Our house had a mind of its own. The creaky old mind of a building that seen a lot in its days and was seemingly trying to share its wisdom with the inhabitants. The lonely house faced the forest and the dark green thicket gazed back with its hollow eyes. Rustling, whizzing, swaying back and forth. One could come out and stand at the edge of the forest to reassure themselves. There was nobody behind that crooked trees. Fuzzy silhouettes swaying in the wind couldn't possibly do any harm. It's just a play of light and shadow. Just a play. I knew it was just my imagination. I already I was already twelve, after all still. Ooh, the sound design. <gasps> oh my god, I've heard a lot of compliments about the art style of this game and just seeing the first few pictures. Oh my god, it looks so good. Hey, put away your book. How many times have I told you not to read at the table? It's bad for your health. Look at how sludged you are. Aww. Mom's trying to be nice. Guess we're hiding a book. Ooh, so we're playing as a little boy? I didn't protest and put the book about Conan and the Barbarian aside. I was stuck on a line I couldn't understand after reading it three times anyway. Aww. Olya had already finished her breakfast and was munching on some cookies. She was so enthusiastic, she almost looked like your typical girl from commercials. <laughs> Alright then. I heard this game was made in Russia, at least I think so, um, or at least made in the Russian language originally, so some of the names might, you know, that's what, might explain why some of the names are in Russian, M or are reminiscent of Russian. You're not going anywhere until you finish all of it. I, on the other hand, was still trying to drill a hole in the plate with my eyes, as if it would make the porridge disappear. Hazy anxiousness welled up inside, all because of the previous sleepless night. The black forest around a house in the gloomy wind. God, the music! I love the piano in this one. The longer I waited, the colder the lumpy white substance became. Well then just eat it! <laughs> it looked like a jellyfish from the Coasto Odyssey. I love that show. I wonder how horrifying the bottom of the ocean is. Or how cold the black forest is at night. Wait, the black forest? Is this playing in Germany? The spoon fell out of my hand. Mom showered me with a cold glare from her green eyes. What did I just say? I oh, get it. Aww. I had ten seconds to catch my breath before battling the nasty porridge once again. I felt around for the spoon. What is this carved on the other side of the table? Karina. Hmm, okay. <laughs> That's my mom's name. 
guess she carved it out with something pointy when she was little. Oh. She sure was a rascal, damaging the furniture like that. She would scold me for a week if I did something similar, though. So cute. Should I remind her about it? No. She's been in a bit of a bad mood lately. I imagined her being my age, sitting under this table. I wonder, was my mom afraid of the dark back then? Or the sounds coming from the attic? Ooh, it's finally getting started. Or the thick forest? I imagined my grandma coming into my little mom's room, sitting at the edge of the bed where Olya sleeps nowadays, and saying this in her soft, smooth voice. Taiga is a special place, little girl. It's watching it closely, sniffing you out. Trying to discern what kind of beast you are. If you're a good sort, it won't abandon you in times of trouble. But if you're a bad apple, it'll grab you by the side and drag you under the ground. Oh god, that seems like a very nice grandma. <laughs> and that would be it. Grandma was caring. She never fought with anybody. Never yelled, never sore. Well, she sure does seem like a nice lady, though. Those were the times without the maddening screams until late at night. Without smash dishes and mutual accusations. Our parents used to love each other back then. Yikes. I remember listening in on one of the conversations by chance. They were talking about Grandma getting prepared for a funeral. Uh, what? <laughs> um, is, is that normal? <laughs> she had already bought a casket. Okay, then. Sure, sure. Let me just buy my own casket. That seems kind of dark. And she called it her cute funeral box. I mean, you know, if she can be so at peace of mind about it. I waited for its time in the closet. It waited for its time in the closet. Patiently. It was black, upholstered, with meat-colored material on the inside. I saw it when my grandma was getting buried. The house didn't change since the time she was alive. Only all of the photos were gone. Glass-covered pictures with gray faces of my ancestors. They all had a dead but watchful look in their eyes. I crawled out from under the table. Olya was done with her cookies and was looking at my share like a sly woodland critter. I turned my gaze through toward the frosted window. There were, a lot of, there were a lot of dark pines outside, but they didn't grab my attention. The pattern of frost formed a picture on the glass. Ooh, it looks so pretty. Olya, look! It's a fox! Where? It looked almost like those optical illusions thingies they put on the back of student notebooks. A mixture of lines at first glance, but if you blur your vision a little bit and look under a certain angle. Not outside, on the window! Look, here's the nose and here's... Hey, eat up! Yes, yes, just a moment. I don't see anything. Hurry up, there's not much left. Ah, there it is! But it still doesn't look like one. And I'm telling you, it does. Nuh uh! It does! Stop it! These kids, I swear. Aww, cute little family. <laughs> no, I couldn't see the fox either. Ah, curious. It disappeared went away. Only the frosty pattern, similar to stretched out nettle leaves, kept creeping up the glass. My dad entered the kitchen with long, measured steps. I want to have a beard like his when I grow up. <laughs> okay, little Timmy. Mom would always ask, jokingly, come on, shave it off, it stings. Aww, it's so cute. The whole family just seems so nice. This was so long ago. Oh yeah, I forgot about the whole fighting thing. <laughs> Nowadays, rumbling doors and woody comebacks were an everyday occurrence. 
Olya always covers her ears whenever she hears something like, What's the point of all this? Through the wall. It's all for your sake, Dad would reply. For the sake of her family. I always called every sound in Fury Fearing the most dreaded, the deadliest word that started with a D. Oof. D I V O. I don't even want to finish it. Oh, our boy can spell! <laughs> it was scary to imagine that me and my little sister could be torn apart and taken into two different families. Anyway, you fox is nothing. I have an owl on my window. You and your owl again. You just said you believe you be that. <laughs> you said you believed me just yesterday. Has anybody seen my car keys? I remember leaving them them on the windowsill. Right. Maybe you did, and maybe not. You're a grown man, a father of two, and still. Karina, please stop. Oh god, those are some petty fights. Just let me get ready in peace. Your keys are in the basket, near the phone. Well, thank you very much. Anton, stop making a martyr out of yourself and finish eating already. And the owl? That was no owl. Come on, it's just pictures on the, on the glass. Don't let her down like that. But there was one! It had giant glowing eyes! Ollie sprung up from the chair and placed her hands on her little face, imitating a pair of eyes with her fingers, the size of an apple each. Last year you had Babai in your closet, and now this owl. But, but I saw it! Alia shifted her gaze back and forth from dad to mom to me, but couldn't find any support. Have you thought about befriending it? You know, like feeding it with imaginary mice? Don't bully our girl. Yeah, come on, dad. She's just afraid to sleep alone because she's still little. Olya pounded her lips in rebellion and rushed into the hallway. The staircase that led up to the second floor creaked. Mom gave, gave Dad a strict look. Oh god, she does look angry. Oh, that look in her eyes. It's so uncomfortable to be pinned under it. Dad just snorted in reply and left, ringing with the keys he just found. A minute had passed and the theme song from The Little Mermaid echoed through the house. Aww. It was stored on incredibly worn-out cassette tape, which Dad already had to glue together once. I'm surprised it still works after that. It's so easy to fix objects, by gluing them back together, for example. But you can't fix your parents' marriage by gluing it together. <laughs> but how do you fix a relationship? <sniffs> well, <sighs> Mom moved to the living room, and I was left alone, anxiously stealing glances at the window. And he still hasn't eaten his porridge! Only had trouble sleeping ever since we moved to this house. She would toss and turn or curl up into a ball under her blanket. Sometimes, she would jump up in the middle of the night and turn on the VCR. Cartoons helped take her mind of all the troubles we had with the move and our parents. Oh god! And then Olya said she saw the giant flying monster outside her window. I mean, honestly, if I saw that in front of my window, I would be scared as heck as well. She became obsessed with it. Who wouldn't? Our parents did everything in their power. They tried every little trick to get rid of those ridiculous fears. Olya, reflu Olya refused to sleep alone and didn't believe that the owl was just one of her nightmares. After tonight, I wasn't sure what to make of my sister's words, what to think of it myself. Can nightmares be infectious? Ooh. Just last night, I couldn't get a wink of sleep and ended up thinking of what to expect in my new school. There were a couple of days left before the, be before the beginning of a new term. My imagination drew long, twisting hallways that led to a classroom full of kids. But other students behind the desks were simply dark figures cut out using a template. 
Circular holes gaped in the middle of their faces, and pairs of eyes blinked inside these holes. It was as if some completely different creatures were looking at me from behind the flat, black silhouettes. Their cruel glares, filled with icy sneers, made me shiver from head to toe. Will I survive here? Oh god. When they gang up on me and beat me down, stomp on me with their bloody shoes. The damn school can burn for all I care. I just wished for anything to happen to it. Doesn't really matter what. I didn't want to go there that badly. I didn't want to see people who are just itching to smack me on the head, trip me up, think of a new offensive name for me, worse than the previous one. I felt like the glasses I wore made me an outsider, or some sort of a monster. Hey, don't say anything bad about glasses, alright? Glasses are cool. My gaze slid across the drawings hanging on the walls. I couldn't consider myself a great artist, but Olya begged me to hand them. Drawing was the only thing that made me happy as of late. The small circle of friends I had also enjoyed my paintings. And they promised to call me from time to time. Sometimes, I imagine mom picking up the phone and saying in a cold voice, You've got the wrong number. Or, Anton is not around. What? Why? That's mean. Anton is not around. I imagine my future classmates lying in their beds, just like me, listening to the howls of, an invis of invisible werewolves outside their windows. Maybe my new classmates will like me after all? So he hasn't been to school yet, okay? But who would ever like a boy with thick glasses? Listen, listen mister, I don't think the glasses are gonna be the, your biggest problem. I mean, my dad used to wear glasses when he was little. And now he's married to the most beautiful woman on the planet. My mom. Oh, that's cute. The house creaked, pressed by the wind. The condo we used to live on, a nine-floor concrete building, buzzed with a neighbor's drill, mumbled with a TV set from behind the wall, cried like a baby from the big family next door. Our current house, though I can't really call it new, was completely different. It was silent and easy, going to the during the day. Oh, it was silent and easy going during the day. Its shadows lay dormant in the corners, on the closet cobwebs, and under the stairs. But they all woke up during the night. Something was watching me from every corner. Almost as if the old photos of my diseased family with their ashen eyes were hanging on the walls in place of my drawings. The floor was squeaking. Rusty drains were moaning, the attic was occupied by noisy drafts. One could think the house was performing some sort of demonic melody. And then I realized I was, in fact, hearing music. It was already playing for a good while. Somewhere at the edge of my perception, I could hear a flute. It was mixed in with the sound of the wind of the creaking old house and my thoughts, too. I stood up and rushed to the window. I wanted to reassure myself that this music was nothing more than a product of my imagination. It's not like someone is playing it there amidst the cold snowy night, right? Oh god, this is so cool! I'm really excited on where the story's gonna go, because right now it's starting off really well. All right, let's open the window. <gasps> someone, was was someone was dancing in the field. Kind of looks like wolves, but not really. Black silhouettes I could barely make out, with the dark forest as a backdrop. They jumped around, basked in moonlight, bumped into piles of snow, rolled around and crawled on all fours. Stories about wolves playing under the moon came to mind, but these were clearly not wolves. They stood up right at times, circled around holding hands and whipping up snow, disappearing into the shadows for a brief moment and then coming back. 
Something bizarre was going on. Shadows dancing in the starless abyss made my imagination go wild, making me anxious at the same time. Suddenly, the music had stopped. The dancing shadows froze in place, and I could swear pierced me with their eyes. One of the silhouettes immediately parted from the bizarre shadow carnival and sprinted across the field with giant leaps. Oh, fuck! Oh my god. <laughs> I knew that it wasn't even a jump scare, but I still got scared. It glided on squeaky snow without leaving any prints until it was devoured by the pitch black shadow of my house, which became even darker and thicker. Close the damn window, boy! I'm. I'm just expecting its face just jumping at me. My heart was jumping around like the bird inside a cage. I shut the curtains with a swift motion and stepped back towards the bed. God! Okay. So you don't get the idea to just close the window, maybe? They saw me. A freezing torrent of fear washed over me. Maybe freezing wind from outside. You still left the window open. <laughs> I stood in the middle of a perfectly dark room and listened to some unwanted guest move and scrape around, looking for an entrance. The sound moved to the right, then circled around the house. Now my guest should be at the front door. I jumped into the bed and covered myself with a blanket, as if it could protect me. The shackles of fear locked my muscles. I remembered the funeral. My grandma lying there, hands crossed on her chest, her facial features sharp like that of a tin doll. Ants running up and down the legs of chairs that held my grandma's casket. Ew. I imagined those little creatures climbing up her head and pulling her eyelids with their tiny legs. Then her wrinkly eyeballs would once again move inside their sockets and she'd be able to see her grandchildren. Oh god, it's so dark. I was chanting the spell she taught me throughout the whole procedure. And now, lying under the blanket and listening to squeaks and howls, I was repeating the same words. On the island of Buyan, underneath a blemished sun, in the sea of color blue, stands a cabin made of wood. They, there lay lard and ashen hair, for the spawn from devil's lair, to feast and always leave alone. God's faithful servant named Anton. Evil leave this house must, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Bizarre sounds had disappeared. I cautiously peeked out from under the blanket and saw curtains waving around like a hangman. And then the night doused me with a new portion of boiling terror. The sounds scratched at my eardrums. In reality, something or someone were scratching at the front door, hurriedly clawing at wood, demanding to be let in. The door was shut. Dad had become very cautious recently, so he installed a sturdy lock. I remember him staring at the forest intently, as if he was looking for someone. Ashes to ashes! Dust to dust! I hugged my knees, placing my chin between them, and drilled the door with my eyes. It was so flimsy and weak before the might of darkness. And then... The doorknob twitched. Slightly. Then it turned halfway, once, twice, as if the person who tried to enter had no hands. The doorknob tilted once more and then started clicking violently. Oh god, Jesus Christ, can we do something? My jaw crammed from fear. My wet fingers clutched the blanket. The door creaked and opened. 
the wind taunted me, moaning inside the tin trains. Now, you'll see. Do I want to see? The door was wide open. The darkness writhed inside the carnivorous mouth of a doorway. Tony! It was as if the night itself was calling out to me, flapping its black wings and squeaking with rusty hinges. I was trembling and snared by the web of darkness that hung in the corners of my room, waiting for the one who weaved it to come out of the gaping black hole. Tony! My abdomen tightened, and my chest rose up, ready to exhale a desperate scream. But before I was able to do anything, the darkness asked me, Tony, you asleep? Oh, it's Anya! Oh my god. My sister's pale face protruded from the thick shadows. Oh, I almost screamed from relief. Alia, I'm I'm not sleeping. Did did something happen? Alia frowned and stuck out her lower lip, a clear sign that she was about to cry. Oh, no. It's it's there again, staring at me. Show away, Tony, please. I'm so scared. The fear that was tormenting me just a minute ago crawled away and hid somewhere in my stomach. I needed to calm Olya down. It was just a dream, silly. Don't be scared. Dreams don't bite. No one's going to harm you. Olya sobbed. <laughs> no. She was trying her best to believe me. But was I sure myself? I mean, I kind of doubt that Olya was just standing at your door, basically ripping it apart and scratching at it. I have an idea. Let's go to your room and watch the video Sleeping Beauty, for example. You like that cartoon, don't you? Why does the Sleeping Beauty have a prince and I have this scary bird? The question took me by surprise. Alright, let's watch Cinderella. My thoughts became tangled, fuzzy. What was that? What studied me with its eyes while dancing feverishly under the moon? The darkness was clinging to the window, and it couldn't be fooled by my grandma's old chants. Where did the music go? Oh god. It couldn't be satisfied with a feast of lard and long ashen hair. Tony, you coming? Yes, yes, just a moment. <gasps> Fuck! Fuck's sake! What the heck was that? Ew, what are those sounds? God fucking damn it. <gasps> Jesus Christ. That's why I didn't want to laugh at Olya and her owl in the morning. I knew there was going to be a jump scare coming. Oh my god. I mean, apparently we're still alive, so that's at least something good. Who could be visiting us here in the middle of nowhere? We don't know anyone around here. So persistent. I felt extremely unsettled just from a silly thought that our morning guests could have come from the woods. I could barely hear voices coming from the front door. My mind was urging me to hide. It's just someone ringing at the door. In the closet. You want to tell us something, Anton? You want to tell us something? Under the table. Behind the curtains where Olya always hides. Tony, come here! I felt like the kettlebells were tied to my feet, but still dragged them toward the hallway. A couple of policemen towered over me in the doorway. They smelled like frost and worry. My mom always winced and grumbled the moment she saw patrol cars. Worse than bandits. At the moment, though, she looked somewhat confused. Hello? 
The senior officer, who wore a grim expression, nodded. A boy had gone missing yesterday. His name is Vova. Look at this, please. Have you seen him? The policeman held out a photograph to me. Oh, he's a little kitty! There was a ginger boy around the age of elementary school, pictured with a wall carpet as the backdrop. He had a striped cat in his hands and wore a wild smile. No, I haven't. Are you sure? Look closely. Where would I see him? I don't know anyone around here. I barely leave the house. Well, maybe you've seen him from the window? That's right, your windows look straight at the forest, don't they? The window... Yikes. No, no, I haven't seen anything. I see. He sounded tired, but his eyes... His stare, long and heavy, was full of suspicion. I squirmed unwittingly under the weight of guilt, which his giant shadow cast over me. The policeman finally tore his eyes from me and glanced over the hallway, the stairway, and the cracks in the ceiling, which I haven't noticed before for some reason. How do you like your new place, by the way? Getting used to it? Bit by bit, it's just a little daughter misses the city a lot. Misses the city, huh? Have the locals been treating you well? Uh, yes, everything is alright, thank you. The policeman pierced through me one more time with his, with his grey eyes. My head started spinning. Uh, can I help you somehow? <laughs> I asked that in a shaky voice to look like a polite boy and to end this unpleasant conversation sooner. Now that I think about it, you look just like one of my nephews, old fella. He's a witty boy around your age, wears the same type of goggles, <laughs> always engrossed in reading those mystery novels. Tommy wants to enroll in police school when his family visited this summer. Wanted to help other people, just like me, see? Where are you going with this? <laughs> I felt uncomfortable, as if a distant relative and not a police officer stood before me. You know what? Little boys like you should stay at home, stay away from trouble. The times have changed so much. Mom interjected in a cold voice. You don't say. Ah oh, well then. What grade are you in, Tony boy? Wait, did we tell him his name? Might have. I don't know. Sixth. Have you made any friends here so far? Not yet. I'll be going to school for the first time after the break. Ah, oh, then I'll leave you my number, just in case. Call me if you have any new info. Okay, then. The police went were gone, along with the shadows, the smell of cheap cologne and the photo of a smiling boy. His face still stood before my eyes. I wondered what it was like for him being all alone, there. For some reason I thought of the forest, swaying in the wind. What did his poor parents feel? And what would my parents do if I'd gone missing? Would they cry and thrash around hysterically? Or would they accuse, e accuse each other, like they always do, and forget about me eventually? Mom, this Vova, did he go missing in our forest? Seems like it, poor child. I looked out the window, at the road. The police was, drove off, wait, you were at Z? Drove off towards the village. The officer's nephew came to mind when I was splitting off old paint from the windowsill. I remembered all the teenage mystery novels from the Black Kitty series I've read this summer. Your average boys and girls investigated all sorts of mysteries there. They looked for clues, spied on suspicious people. And after a set of amazing adventures, BAM! Solved any complicated case. They became local celebrities and must have made their parents very proud. I noticed a trail of policemen's footprints that led to the forest. And then it clicked in my head. Why don't I start an investigation of my own? Oh, that sounds like a very bad idea. 
Maybe I'll find that lost boy. And I'll get a reward. Olya will be so happy. And not only Olya, mom and dad too. Maybe they'll even forget about their quarrels for a while. Maybe I'll even save us from the D word. I fantasized about buying Olya a Tamagotchi and getting a cassette player and a bunch of tapes for myself. Oh, I've always wanted a Tamagotchi myself. And a whole box of Kinder Surprise. Yes, the good German chocolate. <laughs> when was the last time my parents bought us any toys? So maybe it does play in Germany. Last autumn, I think, my dad has lost his job at the time. There's that annoying song about it. I had little to no idea what was the accountant's job like. They count money, I think? <laughs> Neighbors used to envy us. But nowadays, mom and dad barely had money to afford sweets, and dad would always divide a single chocolate bar between me and Olya. Sometimes I gave her my share too. Oh, that's, that's very nice of you. No matter how much I wanted to eat sweets, she was still just as pig's pipsqueak. I couldn't wait to go out, looking for cute clues. Honestly, Anton is such a nice little brother. Or big brother, I suppose. I'm going outside. Yeah, right. You want the police to go around with your, po with your photograph next? The forest is so thick. Honestly, she does have a point. What if the boy got snatched up by wild animals? Or something even worse? Even worse, I go through the hallway. I won't go far, I'll stay away from the forest. Did you hear what I said, or should I repeat myself? Better go pack your school bag, or play with Olya. The sound of splashing water came from the kitchen. It meant that the argument was over, and mom had the last word. Ooh, we can finally do something! Alright, alright, alright. Um, where do you even want to go? Okay, let's see, let's check up on what mom's doing. What's in the fridge? We got some paracetamol, I think. At least that's what I think it says. But a bugger, uh, some of the good pickles, or at least it looks like, it looks like some very thick pickles. Grandma kept ice cream for me and Olya there, but now I could only see meat bits for soup and clump together pale mini. I grew to help, hate them already. All right then. Um, can we talk to mom? Oh, it was difficult to lie to mom, but there was no other way for me to run away from home. Mom, something's wrong with the TV. The picture is dim and there are stripes all over the screen. Mom's face became visibly distorted. Oh, you're killing me here. So, have you had enough of shooting those stupid decks now? Told you the kinescope will go dim because of your console. Wait! <laughs> What was the game called again, the duck hunting game? I forgot the name. Where will we find a TV technician in this hole, huh? Maybe it's just the settings? Have you tried turning it off and on again? Please, go see for yourself. Strange, it worked fine in the morning. Maybe the snowfall caused it? Mom ripped her hands clean on the apron and went to Olya's room. Can we do anything special, you know? I took a peep at, peek at mom's crossword. She would get very angry when someone gave her advice, so me and dad faked knowing the answer and being about to reveal it all the time. <laughs> Aw, that's cute. I smiled at the fleeting thought. Vertical, nine letters. The name of the Philistine deity that protected them from viper bites and had a nickname, the Lord of Flies. Ooh. Second letter is E. Hmm. I actually never read Lord of the Flies. Emrakama of Russia has declared the state of emergency due to adverse weather conditions. According to the weather forecast, a cyclone is moving toward the region. Expect heavy snowfall, blizzards, and snow drifts on the road. Keep your eyes open and take care of yourself. Let's see. The decrepit and stain covered calendar was once my favorite form of entertainment in Grandma's house. How is a calendar your favorite form of entertainment? I remember waking up and running to the kitchen so I could tear off yesterday's sleep first thing in the morning, as if the coming day would get lost in the tiger forest without my help. One day closer to New Year's, one day closer to Grandma's funeral. I haven't touched this candle for years now. Why is it still hanging up? Wouldn't you get a new one once the New Year arrives? 
Since the time they started writing dark and spooky death strands that only made me gloomy instead of funny proverbs and superstitions, to be exact. Wh what kind of calendars do you guys buy? I grabbed a dusty calendar leaf with caution and tore it off effortlessly. Sadly, the spooky descriptions from my childhood were still there. Seven horses carry the log. If seven can't carry, bring the eighth from a ferry. They will take it away and never come back. This is the fate the log cannot escape. I crumpled the grey leaf and threw it at the waste bin, hoping to get rid of the anxiousness that washed over me. It was spreading inside me like an ink stain on blotting paper. Well, okay then. Anything on the window? Nope. Ooh. Alright. We got a bunch of Russian. Senior Lieutenant T Tikonov, Konstantin Vladimirovich, uh, and the telephone number. Alright then. I don't know if we should remember that, but... Uh, wait, is there anything else on here? Nope. Doesn't seem like it. Why is it, what is the eye up there? Oh god, oh that's just the settings. Okay, that makes sense, I guess. Alright, let's turn back and see what the wrist is all about. Um, I've been in the kitchen, I don't think I can go upstairs. Mom's peg top, a family relic. What? <laughs> oh, it's like one of those spinny thingies. My mom played with it when she was little, then she gifted it to me. Ollie was next in the succession line. The toy belonged to her now. Those are actually very fun. She stared at the dancing spindle as if it could show her something. A fairy tale, or maybe even our future. Now, even my little sister was a bit too old for the old squeaky peg top. Alright, what's in here? Oh god. <gasps> you know what? Maybe we should take the axe with us. The dark, stuffy closet. Mom says it smells like mice, but how would you know their smell? Yeah, what do mice smell like? She hates when I stick my nose in there. She's afraid I'll cut myself on the freshly sharpened eggs axe. And Olya can't even be lured close to it. She thinks she thinks Baba is li living there. Oh my god. The only wait, the only character that has a slightly similar name I know of is Baba Yaga, which is like a witch. I don't know if it's the same thing or a different story. I tried to help her fight her fierce ones. I opened the door and turned on a dim lamp limp dim lamp so she would see there was nothing but cobwebs dad's tools and scratch walls she still didn't believe me i mean it doesn't look like too big of a closet it's not like much could hide there and i like to hide in the closet and listen to all your count outside one two three by hide from me and then drag her feet on the creaking floorboards hoping that she wouldn't need to look for me in the cramped monster's den wait can we take the axe Anton, get your ass out of the closet immediately. Man, come on, I just want to take the axe. All right, is there anything else? Make a click on. We have a cross. This cross had seen so many people come come and go in this house. It was black, as if it absorbed all human sin from the long years it was hanging under the ceiling. After Grandma died, mom, my mom was going to take it off and hang a horseshoe in its place as a lucky charm, but she cut herself with a cross a sharp corner and almost fell from the step ladder. Dad called it a sign from above and ordered the cross to be left alone in its rightful place. Yeah, it really does sound like you probably shouldn't take it off. Alright, anything up here? My parents prohibit me from making long distance calls, but from time to time I really want to hear my old friends. I mean, why would they? It's not like it's... Is it gonna cost more if you, you know, make a long distance call? Sometimes I would just pick up the phone, listen to the low hum of the zoomer and the distance crackling, imagining the wind howling in the ice laden courts. Alright. Uh, we got some jackets, some stuff up here, but other than that, it seems like we're done here. Let's go to the front yard. I opened the front gate and went into the field, carefully so my mom wouldn't see me from the window. When I crossed half of the distance towards the forest, the snow piles became as high as my knees. I remembered my nightly fears. I saw those silhouettes around here. They were jumping around, holding hands. That hypnotizing music started playing in my head all on its own. In the light of the day, those distant figures felt like a simple dream. The sun turned my nightmares to ash, but the aftertaste was still there. Distant ringing in my ears, distorted shadows crawling on the snow alongside me. 
and a barely audible whisper in my head. Blurry and almost kind. Everything was silent. So silent I felt like the world was totally empty. No crown, no sky, no parents, no Olya. I feel like Olya is gonna take a, a bit more of a special part in the story. She, like, I don't know, she looks like a main character. <laughs> Despite just being his sister. The time reached its limit. A one-way trip that ended at the forest's piney stockade. Sometimes, silence was much scarier than any scream. Our parents would scream at each other while arguing, and both me and Olya turned to stone listening to them. But then, always, came the ringing silence. Our apartment became numb a couple of days before we de departed. It was hard to remember the last time mom and dad joked around, laughing, or spent time together. Almost like all of it was in a previous life. Gotta drink something. So much talking. <sighs> Always hydrate, kids. It was hard to remember the last time mom and dad joked around, laughing or spent time together. Oh yeah, okay, wait, I already read that. When they kissed with Olya present, she always frowned and snorted in a funny way. <laughs> but one day, it all changed. Something important had left our home. And something scary filled the remaining void. It was as if a fire broke up, and our friends were hurriedly packing our belongings, trying to save themselves and us. From who, though? From the people with dead cold eyes who sometimes visited us in our previous home? Oh god, what? The eyes that only saw balls of worms on the black ground and everything. And somewhere far away a siren was going off, trying to warn us of the coming menace. Aw, oh, look at a little ant and boy. I shuddered, chasing away my delusions, and looked around. There were only me, this white field, and the wind that was whipping up icy dust and belts of powdered snow. I squinted from the sun and turned my eyes to the sunless forest. It looked especially dark in contrast with the blinding whiteness. Knobby tree roots slithered under the snow like fat snakes. Rotten leaves and con coniferous needles froze into the ice. Dry, prickly branches intertwined, bringing up uncomfortable thoughts about fences. Ooh, there's a... There's a little thing there. Were they protecting the forest? Or were they keeping something from breaking out? Some object was hanging from one of the pointy branches. Uh, it looks like a glove. I tried to get closer, drowning in snow, and when I almost got to the edge of the forest, I saw a knitted mitten. It looked like a wounded bird among the hung hungering semi-dark. Should I take it to the police? The senior officer looked gloomy, but he still reminded me of Captain Casanova from my favorite TV show called The Streets of Broken Lights. He was always anxious with a tired look in his eyes, but still brave and strong. Will this mitten help them find the lost boy? Vova! I heard a distant shout. Looked like it came from the river. Vova! Wait, is he shouting that? Or is that the voice he's hearing? As if the trees were calling out to someone. Vova! Resounded closer to me. Oh, so, okay, it's the voice. Someone was standing there behind the trees. Hiding. Vova! I knew someone was looking for the lost boy, but still... Something was unsettling about that figure. Wait, can we see it yet? Its stillness, how it was bent and unnaturally toward the ground. Its blackness. There's no one there, just branches and roots. It's all just my imagination. A nearby bird flapped, it, flapped its wings loudly. Oh god, you should probably go inside, boy! A shadow split from the tree and disappeared from my sight. I looked away for just a moment, but when I turned my gaze back to the same place, it was gone. So, it was my imagination, after all. 
silence reigned for a painfully long time. Oh boy. My muscles were tightly sprung. My heart was beating somewhere in my throat. Oh god, something's gonna happen. Any noise, any little movement, any small whisper from the thicket and I'd sprint. But nothing of the sort happened. I looked at the mitten once more. Ah, uh, I don't know. I feel like we would die if we took that. You know what? Just, just go, boy. Lamps of snow fell from the branches. That reminded me of the song soil makes when you throw it into the pit on top of a casket. I immediately felt dizzy, as if I was balancing at a precipice. I slowly backed away from my finding. I mean, honestly, what good is the mitten gonna do us? It felt like the moment I touched it, a trap would spring. And the mouse would get caught. Someone stepped on the ice behind me, close by. I feel like we made the right call here! I'm, I'm honestly wondering if we could have actually died. My inner voice whispered, Save yourself! Run! My nerves got the better of me. I ran, burying my head in my shoulders. Someone was chasing me from the darkness, breaking pine branches, closing the distance with giant leaps. Snow was slowing me down. Crazy thoughts flew through, flew through my mind. I'll get caught. Then I'll get me. I'll get dragged into the thicket. I'll be gone forever. But there was one more voice. Probably one of reason. It gave me strength, spurred me on. You can do it! Don't stop! I heard an animal roar behind me. Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure we shouldn't have taken that glove. It was so loud, my ears went numb. I felt It felt like the sound had come from a pack of hungry beasts, rather than a single one. The nostrils sucked in freezing air. They sensed my fear. Two giant wings flapped above my head. Oh wait, is it the owl guy? An enormous shadow flew over the clearing. A hoot, a wheeze. The roars were coming from all directions now. From the dried up raspberry bush, from twisted pines, from under the windfall. Hurry, run, don't look back. It felt like I was inside a nightmare. The snowy clearing became, a, became viscous like quicksand. I was stuck in place. Is he still dreaming, or is this actually happening? I pulled my leg from the mushy trap just to be caught in a new one, even deeper than before. How far is your home away? I can continue to drown, sinking deeper and deeper with every desperate push. Was snow ever this sticky? I screamed in horror after realizing this wasn't snow. Someone or something in the snow pile was clutching my pants. I gathered all my strength and rushed forwards. The pressure on my leg was gone, my boots slipped out of the hole, and my soles were on a hard surface again. I reached a clear path with one jump and from there ran to my house. Its gloomy facade didn't look threatening now. That house was my line of defense from the shadows that flapped their wings and the creatures that were hidden under the snow. I tripped over the doorstep and smashed into the door. In all my hurry, I still managed to no the notice the claw marks. Oh boy. As if a dog was striking the wood with its paws, demanding to be let in so it could escape the cold. I hadn't noticed these marks when I was leaving. The heartbeat in my ears was much louder than my surroundings. I couldn't hear whether someone was following me or not. What if they were already in a front yard and my mom hadn't locked the door? Listen, boy, weren't you the last person that went outside? Shouldn't you have locked it? Drowning in fear, I pulled on the doorknob, and it obediently gave way. I rolled into the hallway and shut the door behind me. Oh boy, what's gonna happen? Porch planks creaked as my pursuers ascended the stairs. My fingers slipped off the lock, and I couldn't click it into place. Just, come on, dude. I gritted my teeth and pulled hard on the iron knob, whipping it between the boards. I stared blankly at the door. Someone was 
standing on the other side of a pit pity fall, flimsy barrier that was probably less useful than blankets. Wheezing breath reached into the house and crashed at me in waves. It smelled of pine and sweat. Mom peeked out of the kitchen and chastised me with the same frigid voice she always used when talking to Dad. What exactly didn't you understand when I told you to never slam the door? I feel like that's our smallest problem right now. I, I, I didn't mean to. I snuck a glance at the door. The smell was gone and the breath was too. If there was someone in the first place, of course. Here, mere five meters away from my mom, my fear was slowly weakening, melting like snow in spring, and with it, the last bit of strength I had left my body too. My legs gave way. I propped myself up against the wall so I wouldn't fall over. Mom's expression had changed immediately. The cold mask of strictness had, and detachment was gone. Mom looked the same as before, all those quabbles. She finally saw my condition, my wet pants plastered with snow. Where have you been? What did I tell you, huh? I told you to stay home. Am I nothing to you, too? I got afraid she would cry. I reached out to her like a, like a, like when I was very little and wanted her to cuddle me. Oh, poor mom. But mom regained her composure fast and pu put on her usual face. Her eyes shined like steel. Her voice rang out. <sighs> Your dad can't find his cigarettes. Be honest, did you snatch them? Were you smoking in secret? How old is Anton? <laughs> I, f I feel like he he's not he's nowhere near old enough to smoke. Not even in secret. The <sighs> there was someone chasing me. I thought... I stuttered as soon as I started explaining myself. Tears welled up in my eyes. Mom leaned toward me and sniffed my clothes like a beast, searching for the smell of tobacco. Then she squinted her eyes in suspicion and looked into the front yard. Her expression changed in an instant, and she covered her mouth with her hand. Oh god, she, can she see it too? Look, over there, at the fence! My heart started thumping as if I became prey once again and my pursuers were following me in the field. I could swear that I've heard something scratch at the door. Just like in my nightmare. My mom beckoned me with a finger, and I gathered all my remaining bravery to look into the kitchen window, facing my fear. I could barely discern some hairy silhouettes swimming in snow through the icy winter patterns on the glass. Dogs? Oh, okay. Just a small pack of strays with no name and owner, barely reminding of the hungry monsters that live on the edge of the forest. Oh boy, were you scared of them? I think they'd rather be scared of you, Anton. They were chasing me, like a bunny. And what if they're a rabbit? The smile had slowly disappeared from Mom's face. Now she looked at the dogs as if it was her first time seeing them. What if they attack Olya? Mom? <sighs> I wish your dad could just shoot them all. Oh god, that is uh, very rapid. Mom, look, they're alive. Huh, what? Are they your friend or foe after all? Make up your mind. You're not a little kid anymore. I mean, he kinda is. Mom sighed in annoyance, and I felt so bitter that I bit my lower lip and fixed my gaze on the cobweb ridden corner. Well, some detective I am. In reality, I wasn't risking my life among monsters, but rather my pants among a bag of stupid strays. I wanted to sink through the floor from embarrassment. I mean, to be, to be fair, you know, stray dogs can be quite of a danger, especially if you're a kid. Come here, my boy who cried wolf. Oh, don't just stand there. Come take your pills. Your pills? What? A golden-colored pill, reminiscent of a dead wasp, fell onto my palm. I already took one during breakfast. Don't talk over me. I told you to stay home, and you... Dad would've given you a good whipping for that. Come on, take it, or you won't be able to sleep at night. And you have school tomorrow, so you're just handing out sleeping pills like candy? So I had to swallow that bitter medication, 
drinking it down with similarly awful water that gave off a taste of chlorine. <sighs> Maybe it wasn't Vova Smitten. Maybe it wasn't a mitten after all. It did look like a mitten. Just like the forest monsters. And all oh, yes, owl. Am I going mad? What What's happening to me? Oh god. Are you okay? Either the pill had an immediate effect or my overexerted brain didn't let fear inside anymore. Serenity washed over me, bringing yawning indifference along with it. Anton, you done? See, you can do it when you try. Take off your coat. Are you asleep? No, mom, I was just thinking. Why is everything shaking? What about, I wonder? It's just something silly. Mom scrutinized me with suspicious eyes. As if she wasn't sure she was looking at her own son, and not some doppelganger that came from the forest. Is everything alright? You had the exact same expression when the policeman asked you about the window. I'm alright, Mom. She heaved a deep sigh. Fine. It seemed like the house had changed. The sofa's fabric had become discolored. Fingerprints appeared on the bathroom tiles. The light bulbs also felt different. Dimmer and yellower. Even the saliva inside my mouth had a different taste. A melody from Aladdin could be heard from the upper floor. Olia was done rewatching her favorite Little Mermaid episodes and switched to other tapes. I slowly changed into my home clothes, stopped before the sink and studied my reflection in the mirror. Like I was trying to solve one of those spot the difference puzzles. Then I went upstairs. Jafar's and Lago's voices died down. Aladdin is such a good movie. I walked past Olya's bedroom and slipped into my own. Alright then, it's time for- Oh my god, he has a Triceratops toy! That's so cool! My Triceratops figurine. I know all about all sorts of dinosaurs. Velociraptors, Afrovenators, <laughs> Hypsilophodons, alright. I remember going to the movies to see Jurassic Park back when we still lived in the city and taking pictures with a T-Rex in the hall. I tr it turned its head and roared. It was awesome. And next to it was a Robotech Transformer. I love this cartoon. Aww. When a jet fighter speeds up in the intro among the sounds of Last of Fire, you know your next, next 20 minutes will surely be amazing. Zentraidi space station is captured. Rick, get ready for battle. Aww, so cute, old boy. What if the drawers was empty? I hid the policeman's phone number there. Why would you hide it? The simple action. Oh, maybe because he doesn't want his mom to see or something. I don't know. This simple action drained the last bit of strength for me. You just put a piece of paper into a drawer. I sat on the bed. Normally then I noticed there was someone behind the curtains. Is it Olya? Please let it be Olya. My tired hand dropped to the sheets. Whether it was due to the medication I took or the stress I underwent, the room began to contort as if the wind was blowing the walls out like a pair of sails. The corners of the room bent and undulated. The only stable thing in the whole room was the figure between the windowsill and the curtains. A flimsy piece of cloth was stuck to my hidden visitor. Just like a shroud. Oh yeah? Who else would be standing there? I stood up and licked my dried up lips. <laughs> yeah, Olya, oh yeah, it's so funny. The silhouette was unmoving. It was enveloped softly by the curtains, as if there was a thick layer of darkness there, not a human being. I reached towards the curtains, that sounds like a bad idea. Badum, badum, beat my heart, controlled by medication. The wind sang in the field with a chorus of voices. 
For a second, I wanted to return to the bed, just lie down and watch the person behind the curtain, knowing full well they were looking back at me. They're looking without blinking, waiting for me to fall asleep. I mean, how would you know? You can't see their eyes. Oh god damn it. So it is all ya. Gotcha! I knew it was you from the beginning. A blinding and bright halo lit up above Olya's head, but the setting sun as the background. My sister was shining. When she was just a baby, Dad always used to say she was shining with happiness. I always retorted, but Dad, she's not some flashlight. But I brought her up to the window one day and sunlight poured on her smiling face. I felt I was holding a light woven child. Why did the police come? Did you do something? <laughs> no, of course not. It's because of the owl, isn't it? I showed her a worried smile and dropped her head. A boy got lost in the woods. Oh, he must be really cold out there. Will they find him? They will. I mean, huh? you know, you don't know, but I guess we're not gonna tell you that. The police are going house to house, showing his photo to everybody. Olya traversed the room with care and pressed her tiny palms against the window. And why are they going to the houses and not the forest? Are they scared? The question caught me off guard. How many questions are you catching you off guard? The police aren't scared of anything. They've already scouted the forest. I changed the topic. As if trying to get Olya as far away as possible from the forest thicket. You may get a reward if I go and fight this boy myself. A lot of stuff like in Field of Wonders. Sounds cool, right? Olya wasn't listening to me. She asked in a hushed voice while piercing the forest with incredibly adult eyes, uncharacteristic for her. What if the owl got him? Nonsense. An owl won't be able to lift a human. <laughs> yeah, stupid. But you know what? I was picking my words with utmost care. I forced them out of my overexerted brain. Stay away from the forest. I think it's, uh, how should I put it? It's, it's cursed or something? Yeah, that's surely gonna put her at ease of mind. Just like a fairy tale? No, more like in that spooky tape our parents hide from us. Olya shivered and stole a glance at the window. As I looked at my sister, my heart was tearing apart. She was so fragile, it was so easy to stifle her light. A gust of wind and her small fire would be gone. You're lucky. Mom won't even let me go outside. I'm like a princess in the tower, I can't go anywhere. I'll die from boredom here. You're wrong. No one ever has ever died of boredom. And you have me and you cartoons, and mom and dad will be good to te good to each other soon. You know what I would wish for on my next birthday? I'd wish for mom and dad to turn into children, so we could go and play together like we used to. Oh, that's so sad. Yeah, and if you'd make them as small as bugs, we could place them into a little box. Oh, he giggled and tugged at my sleeve. Tony, let's go watch Aladdin. Fatigue went over my desire to be with my little sister. I was washed over by some sort of heinous apathy. I'm too tired. I don't want to. Come on! It's a boring alone, and Mom is always busy. We can pick a cartoon if you haven't seen before. I know all of our tapes by heart at this point. Not all of them! You haven't watched Peter Pan. Remember how you fell asleep in the middle of it? And so much happens after that. Let's go, let's go! Maybe a bit later. Should I tell you? Should I tell you how it ends? Let's leave that for tomorrow. Bitch, if you're gonna be spoiling if you're gonna be spoiling Peter Pan for me, it's on. I won't tell you tomorrow. <gasps> I know! Let's play hide and seek! Sure, because that's gonna take less energy. No, Olya. Then draw me a dino. Olya, please. Try, try. Will you leave me alone already? 
I blurted it out without thinking, and then I was immediately taken aback. I'd never screamed at my little sister like that. Olya stared at me in shock. Her lips started trembling, a precursor to tears. My chest was seething with disgust and embarrassment. What's happening to me? I heard to prevent Olya from crying. All right, you win. Let's uh, go watch cartoons for a bit. I don't wanna. I came up to her, put my hand on her soft head. Let's go. Let's go watch Peter Pan. Boo, you fall asleep again. I smiled and lifted her chin. Her eyes were wet and felt bottomless. I promise I won't. And I'll draw you full triceratops later. Yay! <laughs> or, I guess, hooray! <laughs> Tripeceratops. Well, close enough. Olya rubbed her eyes with the sleeve of her pajamas and a shining smile returned to her face. I'll go ask mom for condensed milk and bread and you rewind the tape. Oh my god. Wiz, uh, Wiz, my editor, recently told me about about that people were putting condensed milk on bread and I was... Oh wait, maybe not that, but some, someone told me about it. That people were putting condensed milk onto bread? I've never heard of that before. The bread is fresh, just how you like it. Alright, just be careful not to spill the milk. Or you'll be yelled at again. Uh, what I bet I won't spill it? The tape is somewhere in the nightstand, look for it. Oya disappeared into the doorway, and I dragged my feet into the neighboring room. Alright then. Ooh, that's Oya's room, okay. Wait, what's making the sound? <gasps> oh my god, the little bear is making a sound. That's so cute. Okay, wait, what's that? A piggy bank. I mean, could have thought about that. Oh, yeah, saving money for a real puppy. Because dad said that taking care of him will take a lot of money. Yeah, I feel like your piggy bank money is gonna do the job. Alright. Ooh, Rubik's Cube. A ball, a teddy bear. Oh, yes, countless toys. An old teddy bear is the main attraction here. Oh yeah, doesn't sleep without it. And she digs her nose into its fur when she sleeps. Ooh, what's that? Can't click on it. Little doggo, spring toy, that, that, that. All right, let's turn on the TV, I suppose. The old photo on TV was gathering dust in the corner. I'm seriously debating like, wh what time is this playing in? Like. Which time frame are we talking? Oh god, Anton's reflection looks, looks so creepy here. All that was left was clicking the button on the front panel. The tube warmed up and familiar white noise started dancing on the black screen. I almost reached out to turn on the VCR when the noise calmed down and a blurry image appeared for a moment. It was a dark tiger forest just like the one outside my window the pictures split the screen in half are they saying anything something creepy resembling human speech was coming out of the speaker just a few moments later the scenery was again overshadowed by noise did it catch some rogue signal Local TV station only really showed Soviet cartoons, and even that was pretty rare. So wait, are we in Germany now, or are we in Russia? I'm confused. And only just recently, I used to always watch Robotech before school. It was so awesome. Maybe I should tinker with the antenna? What if I catch this channel again? On the other hand, Olya had asked me to find the tape. It wouldn't be nice to disappoint her. But in my sleepy state, I didn't have the strength to do all of it. Alright then, um... Ooh, so I can decide! Okay, do we want to try and catch the creepy TV signal? Or do we want to look for the v VHS tape? You know what? I feel like our little sister's gonna understand if we know, you know, want to do a bit of detective work. We can, we can watch, you know, VHS tapes all day. So, you know, let's try that. Also, I want to find out what's going on. The picture finally cleared up. 
But the moment I rejoiced at finding that weird signal again, the Javits start coughing. A voice barely coming through the cacoph cacophony. Oh god. Hmm, that seems lovely. That just looks absolutely beautiful. He was often seen at the moment when... Small snowy hills were lined up on the screen, pierced with rickety crosses, and a male voice was narrating with a slow, mournful voice. It was a pitch black night at the cemetery. In that faithful dark time, little Senya met her fate at the... Wait, Senya? Wait, isn't our sister's called Anya, right? Oh god, that sounds so similar. Met a fate at the face of a monstrous thicket dweller. The locals call him none other than the Forest Master. I froze and did my best not to move, as if by doing that I could scare away the narrator? I listened closely to his every word. The beast dealt with a helpless girl in a masterful manner. The camera panned across the snow with something black spilled over it, looking for ragged pieces of cloth that were thrown around all, all over the place. Oh god. I didn't want to think what the senior's remains were wrapped in there, so I shut my eyes without thinking. But that looks like the owl guy. The voice continued. Wolves are rarer guests in these parts. Here's what tomorrow the old woman that lives in a nearby crypt had to say. A close-up shot of the face of an old homeless woman, weary from life and alcohol abuse, rattled on the screen. Yes, yes, such a fearsome beast it is. Worse than the rising dead. The old woman splattered saliva all over the rectangular mic. Yikes. And the stink! It's like the rest of her comparison was swallowed up by the sound of a horn. Okay. I've never felt anything like that. I was just standing there, yes, right where you stand, boy -o, and pierced me with its eyes right in the middle of the day. It was so huge, the one with glassy eyes. Obscenities were covered by another bat beep. You know, gotta stay family friendly when we're talking about bloody murderous monsters. You know, they say if this demon lays his eyes on you, he'll snatch you and put you in his bag, and you're done. But they won't touch me. Like likes me, it seems. So they even call me the devil's winch. And it's definitely true. Okay, then. The carnivorous monster will not touch those who fell to the level of forest beasts. Going for the innocent child's blood instead. The forest master's presence is felt more and more on the outskirts of our country. Torn be between believing in what was said and shrugging it away. Oh wait, no. <laughs> she isn't saying that anymore. I decided to record the remaining part of the documentary for some reason. I quickly grabbed the tape that was on top of the TV and put it on the into the VCR without even looking at the cover. What? What if you're gonna overwrite Aladdin? That wouldn't be cool. I pressed record, turned the sound up, and paid attention to the slipping signal. It's not it's not called the forest master for nothing. All of the animals obey it, be they hairy or feathery, they are all precursors for its appearance. If you hear howl from the distance, then it most likely already knows where you live. Oh, that just sounds lovely, doesn't it? If you mind animal friends all over your doorstep and birds watching you from the trees, you'd better hide, it's already coming for you. And if you wake up at night and see a pair of eyes in your window, then soon, 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 soon. soon. Is it just gonna do that over and over again? Oh <gasps> fuck! Jesus fucking Christ! Are you shitting me? The TV suddenly went mad and looked the lot's words over and over, piercing my ears. What the fuck? I got goose gum bumps all over my spine. Well, <laughs> no fucking shit. The tape ended and was rewinding to the beginning. Oh my god. The sound of rustling tape reminded me of leaves in the wind and the low howl of the beast. I woke up from my stupor and pressed the button. The VCR ejected the tape. For a moment, I thought it was stained with saliva. Ew. But that was just the light from the chandelier making the black plastic glossy. 
and then I saw the cover. Oops, I recorded it over Peter Pan. Oops. That's what I get for hurrying. It was bad enough that I ruined all the Eskatoon, but I also put this creepy stuff over it. Can't let her see this. We'll drown in tears. Yeah, you probably shouldn't watch that with your little sister. I snuck a glance at the door. I could hear the clatter of glass and the squeaky floorboards. Olya appeared in the doorway. You haven't started without me, have you? My sister brought the tray with unevenly cut bread and a whole can of condensed milk. Uh, no. I was looking for the tape. Uh, do you really want to watch Peter Pan? I do, I do! Well, uh, bad luck, fella. Turn it on already. Mom will come watch her Brazilian drama soon. Come on, think fast, fake detective. You know, I didn't like Peter Pan. Uh, maybe we should watch Little Mermaid instead? I've already seen it so many times. And you promised me. She's so stubborn. Hello, let's uh, watch a couple of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles episode first. Deal? Hey, that sounds good. All you frowned, but ultimately gave up. She put down the tray and crossed her hands on her chest. Hey, if you want it so much, can you open the milk can? I'm afraid I'll cut myself with the sharp edges. Yep, seems very dangerous. As soon as I stood up, colorful dots popped up before my eyes, and my sore legs were pierced by thousands of needles. Only when I reached the sofa, I realized that the can was already open. Oh, yeah, tricked me, played me for a fool. Well, what, what kind of joke is that? <laughs> my stomach became heavy. I wanted to rush towards the TV, but my little sister was faster. She picked up the remote and proclaimed in a victorious tone, Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha! As a remote's master, I command you to watch Peter Pan. I couldn't even open my mouth and the VCR had already eaten the cursed tape. She'll play it and then black crosses on unnamed graves, empty crypts, bloody scraps on the snow, and the insane devil's wench. I'd better tell the truth. Olya, stop! I erased the end of your tape by accident. I'll trade it with you for two of mine. But what do you mean? You couldn't erase it. Me and Dad had broken off all those plastic pins with a screwdriver. You can't record anything over my cartoons now. My little sister pressed the triangular play button on the remote. Oh god. I squeezed on the inside, awaiting the out of this world voice of the narrator. Oh, look at it. But I saw the duel between Peter Pan and Captain Hook instead. I sighed in relief. My head, he heavy as a leaden ball, now rested in my hands. Olya smiled in joy. She put the tape on rewind and started spreading milk over her bread. And when the cartoon started, she forgot about everything in the world. As if she really got transported to the Neverland, like she always wished. To be honest, I also imagined myself there. In a land where one never ages, where no one argues over little things, where no one listens to fights and the sounds of broken plates at night. But now Peter Pan's land was especially far away from me. My thoughts dragged on, stumbled upon the horned beast that awaited me among the trees, and the narrator's mournful voice haunted me, sliding over bushes and ravines, like a winged carnivore would track its prey. It felt like I was dreaming with my eyes still open. Then my sister's scream pulled me back to reality. Tony, Tony, shut the curtains fast. Uh, why? No one's watching you. It's, it's dark and when it's dark, the owl comes. I'm, I'm scared. I got out of bed fighting my drowsiness and closed the curtains. Yes, close it. Fast. Just just do it. I did my best not to look outside, towards the treetops. Towards the taiga forest, which seemingly drew closer and closer. Of course, it was just a visual effect from shadows of branches scraping the snow. Tony, Mom thinks I made the owl up. And Dad, too, thinks I'm a liar since I'm small. But the owl exists! Honestly, honestly, it does! You do believe me, right? 
that it comes every night and and I swiftly grabbed I swiftly grabbed Oil Olya's hand and looked her in the eyes. I was trying to transfer at least some of my courage and determination. But did I really have those qualities? Yes, I believe you, alright? Just don't nag our parents about it anymore. They're dealing they're already dealing with a lot, so they'll just get mad at you. Oh man, that's that's so mean. I feel like all else should be there for her. Or at least like let your sister sleep in your bed or something. You know, be be nice or whatnot. Come and tell me if anything happens. And don't look out the window. But it but it wants me to look. Oh god. Doesn't matter. Act like it doesn't exist and never existed, like it's made up, just like mom and dad said. Say. I'll get tired of waiting. It'll get tired of waiting and fly away. Yeah, I don't know if I would be so sure about that. Did she go to bed? We followed Peter Pan's adventures as if nothing had happened. As if the forest didn't kidnap kids. As if our parents weren't tearing each other apart bit by bit. Captain Hook was running away from a crocodile and Captain Pan was headed to London on a gilded sailboat. By some miracle, I, it, I lasted longer than my little sister. Oilas, I, Olya's eyelids had dropped. She started snorting lightly, resting her chin on the side of the bed. The chorus was singing the ending song. The world of Disney was lit up by a silvery moon. Oh god, why do I feel like something horrible is going to happen? Yup, there we go. There's a good old fella again. Another moon peeked from under the first one. Scary and wan, hanging over the tiger forest. The horrific report got recorded right over the credits. My throat went dry. My pulse became faster. I looked toward Olya. She smacked her lips in her sleep. I squeezed the remote with all my might, ready to press stop at any moment. Oh god. Well, you know there's something horrible gonna happen when the music just turns silent. I rewound the recording, checked if it was intact, and then carefully took out the tape. The protective pin was still in place. I stood up and left all your room. Whether it was by providence or by curse, I hit the tape at the exact moment mom peeked into my room. So we're just gonna use that drawer to collect all our little detective stuff? Okay. Ooh, achievement unlocked, curse tape. Enough playing around. It's your face day at school tomorrow. Go to bed. You should sleep properly. You don't want to be teased for being sleepy, right? Okay, which child has ever been teased for being sleepy? And only unless you like go away, uh, unless you fall asleep in the middle of class. Adults think everything is so simple. As if sound sleep would ensure my class would, mates would like me. I covered myself with a blanket up to my neck and listened to the house humming, to something invisible rustling in the corners. My inner voice had a question for me. Do I want to hear that mysterious flute again? Probably not. <laughs> yes or no? Maybe it's just a part of growing up and I can't fully understand my own desires. The forest wailed behind the barrier that was my walls. Some ethereal entity wandered the fields. Branches, branches shook as if calling for me. The wind howled on and on in the night. My thoughts were like annoyed flies that annoying flies that entered my head before becoming weak and tangled. I didn't notice how I fell into slumber. my god so that was the first episode of tiny bunny uh i think the next one is gonna be released uh, sometime next year that was an experience i love the art style i love the sound design and the story is so interesting I'm I am really really stoked to find out what's going on uh, whether this is just gonna become a full-on detective game um, 
or how interactive it's gonna be because of course um you know in episode one they're probably gonna have to do a whole lot of exposition and stuff like that um but either way i am super super excited for episode two to come out i hope you guys are as well i'm gonna try my best to play it as soon as it comes out um and yeah i will see you guys another time